Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Fantasy in the 5-Minute Pool on ICC. Okay, let's play G6 against Fantasy. I've had some success with this opening. And what will we have? Maybe a Benko by Transposition if he plays D5? Ah, we're going to get a uh, maybe a Maroxy position or another position where I get my Knight into D4. I wouldn't mind that. All right, bring it on. <laughs> let's take with a Pawn. Okay, let's play d6, and we're going to go knight f6, possibly to d7. I had a game against this guy, uh, Krupp was his name, and I am from England recently, and we had almost the exact same position. It might be the same position, in fact. Okay, do I play knight c5 or something else? Knight c5, I can maybe... They might go b4. There's one slight concern I have here. Okay, let's just castle. If they drop this bishop back, maybe queen b6 is a decent reply. So they're going to be try to try to be annoying and attack this pawn. So let's just defend it with our rook. This queen might be hopping out to b6. Maybe they could play b4, though. But they play rook there instead. I think I'm happy to get this move in. I like these funky scenarios where the pawn is on d4 and is kind of cut off from the black forces, but it does have a cramping influence on white's position. So it's not all bad. All right, so knight c5. If b4, we take, take, and then take on b4. That looks pretty good. Let's do that. I might play a5 if necessary. But for the moment, this seems okay. Uh, maybe he could drop the bishop back. But then I could play knight a4, perhaps. And attack this pawn. He does play bishop b1. Hmm. What about bishop g4? Then if knight takes d4, I could play knight takes e4. And maybe hope to get something, but it's not much. It's very slight, if anything. What about d3 here? If d3, b4, then knight takes e4, queen takes bishop f5. Oh, I could take on g5 too. I think I might go for this move. This looks like fun. Maybe he could play e5 and try to block out this bishop. So I'm trying to open up my bishop and queen on b2. And I'm also blocking this bishop from guarding e4. Dynamic possibilities. I'm not sure who Fantasi is. I played them a while ago. I barely remember the game. I think it was a Slav. I was white. This is a fun position. <laughs> I have to play in hypermodern style more often, just fiend kettoing my bishops and such. <laughs> so the challenge here for white is to find some move that doesn't either lose a pawn or like surrender the bishop pair. I don't think there's a solution to that problem. He probably has to play bishop takes d3. But then I have some nice choices. I could just take on d3, or I might play queen takes b2. That's the way I'm leaning right now. You saw in this previous game I had in this line against uh, Krupe, Krupe. Um, my knight on c5 turned out to be a great piece. So I'm wondering if I can engineer a scenario like that. It already is a good piece right now. Unless white's able to kick it with b4. I don't see that changing anytime soon. I am up a minute on the clock. This is awesome. This is how people with good time management must feel. <laughs> Okay, b3, so I can take e4. I probably should. Queen takes. I can grab that bishop or play bishop f5. Okay, let's do this. Probably bishop f5, huh? Looks best. Hmm. Ah, he has bishop e3, though. Bishop e3 comes back and defends. So maybe we should grab this guy right away. Now bishop f5 or something else? Maybe a5, a4. Queen d4 comes to mind, looking to swap. Yeah, let's look for a trade of the queens. Let's see what Fantasi has to say about that. Maybe they can play queen f3 and avoid the trade. I'm just a little bit concerned about all the stuff coming towards my king. So I'm trying to ensure that that doesn't hurt me too bad. So if queen here is queen g3 going to be their 
reply probably. That's not that big of a deal though. Let's just do this. And we'll develop. Probably trading the light square bishops is a fine decision. That bishop was lurking and causing some trouble on g6 slash h7, so this is all right. Let's take... Hmm. Bishop e5, is that anything? They can always go to h4, though. Bishop h6. What about bishop h6? They can play f4. How about b5? And if take, then I take on d5. That seems interesting. Maybe we do that. We'll try it. Try to break up their structure a bit. White has more than evened up the time situation now. This bishop's powerful, though. It's not flexing its muscles yet, but there's a lot of influence on this diagonal, and it could go to f6 or e5 if needed, or maybe even h6, something like that. Okay, so white goes for the cheapo mate threat. We're going to play h6 to defend. Now, where to put the knight? Because it looks like I'm taking on c4 next, almost no matter what. I bet they put it on f3. They do. Okay, so if I take, are you going to take on e7? Is that your point? No, I'm not scared of that. I could even play c3 in that case. Hmm, takes with the queen. Hmm. Maybe bring this rook over? Try to deflect the queen from d5? Yeah, let's do that. They've got some back rank issues, but for the moment it's probably fine. Rook b8, perhaps? Yeah, let's do this. If takes, I'm going to take with the queen. Queen a5, okay. I can trade and maybe play something like queen f4, but their queen can always come to c7, so I'm going to pull this back for now. I'll try to play against this weak d5 pawn, but I'm not completely sure how this will go. I like the fact that my bishop doesn't let their knight get into d4. That's a nice point here. Maybe bishop f6 soon? Okay, he's going to do that. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, that knight's coming to c4. Okay, I'm going to try to force a trade. I know the knight can still come to c4 after the swap, but then I'll pull my bishop back to f6. And it could be okay. All right, we're going to do it this way. d5 is still weak for them. They've got a nice blockading knight, but I don't think this queen is really that effective. Okay, let's guard this pawn. Let's not blunder that. Any threat? Doesn't look like it. Maybe rook c5 is coming. Yeah, let's send it there first and foremost. A5. Looks annoying for white to defend. At least for now. Okay, let's do this. Maybe e6 if given a chance. Hmm. We'll see about sacking on c4. I might do that. Do I take a shot on that? Let's try it. It's interesting. Very little time left for both of us. So we're going to go after some of their weak pawns, basically. Let's push this pawn. This pawn's already dangerous. If we can get it up a little bit further, they're in big, big trouble. <clears throat> push. He can't take it. His rook's hanging if he does. And we're just going to win. A1, queen. And he's not going to outblitz us here. So, yeah, he resigned. All right, so my bishop on f6 turned out to be a force in the end. I'm not sure about that exchange sacrifice, but 
One thing I've learned about time scrambles is that it's always easier to be the aggressor in a time scramble, creating threats. So that's what encouraged me to go for rook takes c4. In a over the board game, you know, that's a decision that would be a pretty big one. If rook takes c4 is not good, I mean, black would have to find some other way to pressure white or maybe just agree to a draw. So it looks pretty hard for either side to really get through here. I feel that in the middle game, I might have been better when I pushed d3. It looks like I have a lot of threats, but white found a way to navigate that with b3, knight takes e4, queen takes d3. And then we swapped on g5, and I had the bishop pair, but the bishop pair didn't seem to be that big of a deal. It always felt like I was a little bit better. I mean, white had certain weaknesses like the d5 pawn, but I didn't notice any crushing blow, even right up till the time scramble at the end. Yeah, right around here, white should probably play something like rook a3, but this is tough. My dark square bishop can, can really assist that a pawn, and my queen is aggressively placed. It's attacking d5 at all times. I think it was a good exchange sack. So let's go back and have a look. So this was a modern, and then striking with c5. Now, with e4, they offer to go into a Meroxy bind like this. I don't really play these structures for black, so I was hesitant to do that. So I played knight c6 instead, just trying to pressure here. Bishop e3 is probably a playable move for white at this juncture, and black may have to take at some stage on d4. But instead, white played d5, as most people do, and then I got the knight in, supported by my bishop and pawn. So, yes, this pawn is a far uh, ways away from home, but it can be supported by the bishop on g7 from afar, and it really does mess with white's coordination. Like, they can't develop as they would like to here. They can't put the knight on c3. Um, it restricts the dark square bishop a little bit. So it's a nice wedge to have in white's camp, provided you don't just lose it straight up. So <laughs> that's what I was trying to avoid here. Bishop g5, I think this is a decent move by white because... That restricts my queen. I can't pop my queen out to b6 for fear of losing this pawn. So I have to waste a moment playing rook e8. I could play h6, but probably they're going to play bishop h4. So I didn't know if I wanted to weaken my king side potentially with that move. Let's add the engine in right about here. So rook c1, queen out to b6. Then I got knight c5 in. And this is where I thought things started going in my favor. But it might not be too bad. Yeah, d3, and white found the best move, b3, because, again, we're opening up the attack here and on the pawn on e4. White has to lose one of them. But if they can win the d3 pawn back, it's fine. So I think they correctly kept their b pawn. They'd rather lose that center pawn because if they played like... Let's say they play something like this. Well, now I can take here, and I guess they even have tactical problems getting the pawn back. But even if they didn't, I feel like this might be a nice situation with my knight on c5. It never has to worry about b4 coming up and forcing it to move from that square. So as played, b3, knight takes e4. Yeah, here, they're on my knight. I thought briefly about bishop f5, but then I spotted that white can save their dark square bishop with this, hitting my queen. I don't get a chance to do any really nasty discoveries, I don't think. So I just swapped and then played queen d4. So it looks like going for a queen trade was all right. But white did not cooperate. And I'm going for the queen trade because I felt like maybe these pieces could create an attack against my king. And when my queen is over on b6 a couple moves ago, it wasn't doing much. So a queen trade felt correct. And here the engine wants to play h6 and keep both bishops or just bishop d7. Possibly I overrated... This bishop on b1. It's not that strong of a piece, I don't think. But I just thought, let's develop and offer a trade. So bishop f5. And the position's roughly level. Here I played b5, just looking to break up the structure. I thought this was good, because it made d5 weaker. And white declined to take this pawn. This would produce a imbalance. But maybe white has a 3 versus 1. I have two unopposed central pawns. Which structure's better? I don't know. Maybe white's queenside pawns uh, if they get going, but there is something to be said for this central formation assisted by this bishop. Computer says, again, dead equal. So queen h4, threatening queen takes h7. 
I just kicked the knight back, and then took c4. White took with the queen. They could take with the pawn, but then I get the b-file. Maybe I could post a rook here after solving the problem of the e7 pawn, so just doing that. So queen takes, I played rook e c8. I used that rook instead of this rook because I wanted the a pawn defended in the case that they do something like this. Ooh, and also there's a, a tactical thing that I didn't notice at all, but yeah, if rook a c8, there's rook takes e7. That's a nice stroke. Idea being that if the queen gets captured, then white takes here with check. And after the king gets out of check, then white can take. And white has two rooks against the queen. I could give a check here, but they're coming back and... Probably white is very much for choice here. Yeah, two rooks versus a queen on an open board. Usually the rooks are going to be better. A lot of um, making that determination depends on king safety, by the way. If the queen can attack the enemy king, and there are also a lot of pawn targets, then it might not be bad for the queen. But um, under most like normal circumstances, the two rooks are going to be better. So, yeah, I just played rook e c8 to keep this pawn defended by the rook, but it looks like I avoided rook takes e7 in the process. This move might be unnecessary. Just bishop f6 right away, defending this pawn. I'm not sure I really gained much by playing rook a b8, because then white moved the queen and I had to defend this pawn anyways. Again, the computer wants to play this. And so if here, rook a8, maybe I go after the a2 pawn is the point. Hmm. So queen d7, h3, still roughly equal. And here we were both approaching time pressure. White transferred the knight to c4. That seems like an, improve, an improvement, but I'm really not sure it is. We're still dead equal here. I think this position is a little easier to play as black because I don't have a weakness. Unlike white, they have a pretty glaring weakness on d5. But the game is... Anyone's for the taking with both of us being under a minute. Yeah, it was just really level up until the final moments, wasn't it? H4, I just played H5 to stop them from pushing on the king side. Yeah, 30, 30 seconds versus 30 seconds, and here I gambled with rook takes. Yeah, as expected, the computer doesn't like it so much. <laughs> it says that white is better, but probably white has to play very precisely to prove it. And in a time scramble, the aggressor is for choice, I think. There really was no reason to give me the A-pawn, though, was there? Queen d1. But finding a move like queen d1 might cost white a valuable few seconds. You never know. And my king is completely safe. Like, this advantage that it's giving, if white were to actually convert on this plus 0.6 or whatever it is, it could legitimately take another, like, 30, 40 moves. Uh, so, I mean, rook take c4 was a practical decision. No doubt about that. Yeah, White just was lacking a plan here. They kind of waited for me. And once my A pawn starts going. Ah, so here I can trade queens because I think after bishop b2, there's no way for White to stop the A pawn. Bishop b2 is a nice move to connect the bishop to the pawn. And that pawn's rolling on through. I just instinctively kept my queen in time pressure. Here again, same idea, bishop b2. Even though we put ourselves in a pin, the pawn is coming up to defend the bishop, and a future a2 will be unstoppable. Yeah, and here a3 was nice. I did spot this one. White's queen was overloaded. It was trying to defend the rook and also impede the progress of the pawn. So we can push, and white cannot take because they would lose the, the rook. And we won. Okay, so another victory in this system. The system is growing on me. Uh, this hypermodern line where you end up with a pawn on d4. It's pretty fun. If you're interested in this, you should you should give it a shot. If you like hypermodern play, you might enjoy playing that pawn structure. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be back again soon with another one. Talk to you guys later. Bye.